we're at this extraordinary moment in history where everything is up for grabs. And it's time for us to grab hold, but we're not going to be able to do that using the systems we've got at the moment. We've got to reinvent them. Because we've got this economic, ecological and technological change happening to us all at the same time. Um, so one of the things we all know is that our institutions are not fit for purpose anymore. And I say that with a lot of affection for them. You know, the, the, the systems we built were built for very good reasons in the way they were, and the people who achieved those systems did amazing things for society, but they just don't fit anymore in 2016. So that's the bad news. The good news is we have new technology, we have new ways of thinking, we've got a hungry millennial generation coming up, we've got uh, a whole bunch of innovation happening in Africa and, and nations that have been behind now really moving forward that gives us this rich, fertile ground to, to remake the world and remake it better for everybody. Um, but the ugly news is it's going to get messy because old systems and old ways of thinking are going to have to die and they're not going to go uh, quietly. There's a few key technologies that are going to change everything. There's 3D printing, uh, there's energy internets and renewables, and there's blockchain. And what all of these technologies do is they democratise and distribute something that was previously only done in a centralised place. So the last economy was built on economies of scale. These technologies allow us to have economies of distribution. So you can now manufacture many things locally if you have the right 3D printer, uh, which means they, they're cheaper because they don't have to be shipped. They have lower carbon emissions. Uh, in fact, there's now technologies evolving where 3D printers are printing on the nanoscale, printing simple components from microchips. Now that points to a world, probably not too far in the future, where 3D printers will be able to print all the components that are required to make 3D printers. So you couple that with the distributed energy revolution, where locally produced energy is cheaper than the centrally produced stuff you used to buy. And then they add on top of that a financial system that has removed the untrustworthy elements from it, i.e. the people, and replaced them with a blockchain, which means you can actually trust what's going on. And you can do all those transactions far, far cheaper and rely on them, you know, their veracity. And you've got a, you've got a, a whole different set of foundations upon which to build a more just, sustainable and equitable society. That surely is a good thing. It's no longer companies competing against companies, it's networks competing against networks. And we're at this moment now in history where you have to think in systems. As individuals, you have to realise now that the future's up for grabs and you've got a role to play in making that future. Peter Deere is a man in a shed, worked out how to create an engine that runs on liquid air. And he did it with a can of antifreeze. And in doing so, he created a technology that gives us uh, sustainable, cheap battery technology for the grid, and uh, sustainable refrigeration technology for the developing world. You know, that's a man with a lawnmower and a shed and a can of antifreeze, uh, uh, changing the world two times over. There's the story of Gusing, which is this small town, 4,000 people in, uh, in southeast Austria. And uh, 20 years ago, town was on its knees. Mass unemployment, it, it's kind of withered on the vine being next to the Iron Curtain for 50 years. And they decided to take control of their own energy system, which was seen as madness at the time and it's taken them 20 years to, to get there, and they've had a hell of a battle with the energy companies and whatever, but they've now largely succeeded. Now, what's the dividend? Well, the town is booming because it pays half the price for its energy of its neighbours. So companies are turning up and saying, well, this is a good place for me to do business because I, one of my biggest costs has gone down. So I'm optimistic about the future. No and yes. Uh, people often say I'm an optimist, but what I am is a possibilist. What I'm saying is that a better future is eminently possible. And there are some people who believe that too. And if you're not waking up in the morning and believing that you can make the world a better place, then what, why do you get up? Now, some people get this. And big companies can do it. And I'm going to give you two examples. One, one a new company, one an old company. The new company, of course, is Tesla. Tesla is a great story about how we reboot humanity to run on, sustainable, uh, on a sustainable footing and make money and have a nice time doing it and drive very nice posh cars. And then you've got Unilever. You know, and Paul Polman stands up in front of the CBI uh, soon after his appointment as CEO and says, how much longer are we going to steal from our children's future? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to halve Unilever's environmental footprint, I'm going to double our revenues at the same time. If you're a hedge fund, don't invest in me. Um, I'm not going to do quarterly reporting because I don't think it helps me think long term. And, you know, lots of people at the time were going, well, he won't last long. Uh, he's still there. And by the way, look at Unilever's share price the last four years, it's gone up 70%. Uh, and now Unilever have said, by 2030, we're going to be an environmentally positive company. And what happens then? Well, all the best talent, who do they want to work for? When you go to the pub on a Friday night and people say, who do you work for? What do you do? You want to feel proud about what you do. 
Okay, so companies that take this seriously attract the best talent, and they're doing something good for the planet as well. And that surely should be something we all want to encourage. I am optimistic of our collective ability to suddenly wake up and go, you know what, if we worked a bit more closer together, and I mean across companies and across markets, and started thinking in systems, we might just have a chance to make an incredible world where we can all be happy. <laughs>